G'day guys, we've got a question today on implicit differentiation where we've got a circle of radius 1 that's inscribed within a parabola of y equals x squared and we're asked to find the centre of the circle. So when we're attacking a question like this, I like to try and, before we even start the maths, I like to, to try and derive a few facts that we can sort of work with so we're not just going from a blank sheet of paper. So first of all, I would say that we can establish that the centre of the circle because of the symmetrical nature of, of the quadratic equation is going to be of the form x equals 0 and let's just say y is going to equal k. So that's what we're trying to find. We're literally trying to find just this k value. Now we know if we have a circle of center 0 comma k the equation of our circle is going to be x squared plus y minus k squared and we've got a radius of 1 so 1 squared which is still 1. Cool. Now these things are going to if we were rolled to roll the circle down the quadratic these intersection points here that they're going to meet at let's just call that well let's call this one point a comma b. Okay. So what we know as well is at a comma b, the tangents will be equal. So basically what we can say is the tangent line to the quadratic will equal the tangent line to the circle. But I just like to write myself down these notes just while we begin the question. Okay, so from here what we're going to do is we're going to just establish the last equation. So we know that y is equal to x squared. So at the point of intersection, so I'm just going to say at a comma b, we've got, if we were to plug these points in, we are able to find b in terms of a, so we can say b is going to equal a squared and we can plug this these two points into our circle as well and we can go well a squared plus b minus k squared is equal to 1. Cool. So what we can then do is notice how we have this b equals a squared. We can just plop that straight into our second equation, sort of a simultaneous style. And we're going to finally end up with b plus b minus k all squared equals 1. Great. So what we can say now as well is we can go back to our thing that we wrote in red. We can say that the tangents are equal. So we're going to find out our equation that's going to give us our tangent lines. So dy dx of both. So let's just find dy dx of the quadratic first. It's quite a bit easier. It's equal to 2x. Now with the... Um, circle function, we're going to have to do a little bit of expanding first, so I'll just write it here. We're going to have x squared plus y squared minus 2ky plus k squared equals 1. Cool. So when we do, this is where the implicit differentiation comes in on this one. When I implicitly differentiate this, I'm going to take do the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Cool. Now, in this one, we, we basically do the derivative with respect to x of each individual component separately. So in this case, we're going to have d dx of x squared is simply 2x plus d dx of y squared. Now, this is the chain rule, so we do the outside function first. So that's going to be plus 2y, but then we times that 
by the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's using our chain rule. And then we do exactly the same here. We've got the derivative of uh, the function with respect to y first, which is going to be just negative 2k, times by the derivative of y with respect to x. And then we don't have um, any derivative of k squared, so we just leave that off. And the derivative with respect to x of 1 is 0. Cool. So what we can do is we can simplify this. So we're going to have 2x plus dy dx of 2y minus 2k is equal to 0. And as a result, we can say that in this case, I'm just going to move it up back up to here so we can have them sitting next to each other. dy dx is going to be equal to minus 2x divided by two y minus two k. Cool. And so from here guys, what we can do is I'm just going to change color because these are equal. We can go 2x is equal to negative 2x on 2y minus 2k. Cool. So what we can do is we can then go, we can substitute in. We know at a, b, this is happening. So we can just go, well, this is going to be 2a equals negative 2a all over 2b minus 2k. Cool, so what we can do now is we can just rearrange this and what we have is we can, we will rearrange this and we're going to get, let me just move it up to the top, I'm just trying to be conscious of space guys. This you can do your own rearranging, but will give us negative 1 on 2 is going to be equal to b subtract k. Cool. So what we can do from here is I'm going to substitute this, changing colour again, is into this formula here. So we have b plus b minus k all squared equals 1 but I know that b minus k now is equal to negative one half. So I'm going to substitute this into there. So what I get is I get b plus negative one over two squared equals one. So what I can do then is get a value of, we can just multiply out the brackets first, b plus 1 quarter is equal to 1, therefore b is equal to 3 over 4. Cool. So from here then, we can substitute b back into this equation and solve for k. And once we've solved for k, we have the centre of the circle. So this is our last little step. So we're going to substitute this into here and we're going to find k, which is our the value that we need. So we're going to have 3 over 4 plus bracket 3 over 4 minus k all squared e equals 1. Now from here we're going to go take the 3 over 4 over to the side and we get 3 over 4 minus k all squared equals 1 over 4. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we're going to get 3 over 4 minus k is equal to plus or minus 1 over 2. So the square root of a quarter is plus or minus a half. 
So then what we're going to do is we're going to take the k over here and the plus or minus a half to the other side. So we're going to have 3 over 4 plus or minus a half is equal to k. So we can have 3 over 4 minus a half, which is 1 over 4. And if we have a 1 over 4 as our point, which is down here somewhere, the radius of the circle will obviously go below the x-axis, so that can't be our solution. So we'll go 3 over 4 plus 1 half, which is 5 over 4. So we can then say, well, 3 over 4 plus a half equals 5 on 4, which is equal to k. So find the center of the circle. So we can say, put our, change our color back to a regular one. Therefore, the center of the circle is 0, 0,5 on 4. Thank you for coming. So, it's a pretty in-depth question, guys. You have to do quite a lot of algebra. There's a, the implicit differentiation comes when we're trying to differentiate both sides of the circle function. But that's basically it. The rest of it is just making sure that your algebra and your substitutions don't go astray. A question like this um, would come up every now and again in an exam, but to be perfectly honest, you wouldn't expect this until maybe university to come up more frequently. This would be to like separate your A and your A plus students in the high school. So yeah, I hope the video helped guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos most days, but until next time, guys, I keep enjoying your maths and I will see you soon.